بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرج من ظلمات الله وأكرم من نور الفعل اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانفر علينا خزاء ونعوذ منك برحمتك يا رحمة الراسل Alhamdulillah, we have to feel to continue our study of Kitab al-Sabr wa shukr As you remember, we started the section on shuk and first there was a chapter on Fadila to shuk merits of gratitude. Then we started with Had to shuk Haqiqa to shuk definition of shuk and we said that shuk is something which has three elements. There is ma'rifa into shuk. There is hal, a kind of condition, a kind of happiness and joy with openness and humility. And there is amal, action. And we said these three must be there. So, Alhamdulillah, we talked about this and we had a beautiful example about a person who has been given by the king who wants to travel, has been given a horse. Some people are just happy that they have the horse, no matter where does the horse come from. If they find it, if anyone gives them, it doesn't make difference. Some people are happy that the horse is given to them by the king. So they are much more appreciative. Maybe if it was given by other people, it didn't matter to them. But it's very important that the king has given them, shows they have a position with the king. But we said the third possibility is that someone is happy because he knows the king is traveling by horse. Now he has been given a horse and he wants to travel with the king. He says, now with this horse, I'm able to be at the service of the king and near to the king and perhaps serve him and get closer to him. He said, these are three conditions that some people may have. Some people just are interested in the blessings some people are interested in the blessings when they come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for some people, these blessings are opportunities to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. We talked about what's the blessing of having eye, having ear, and so on and so forth. There is a kind of uh, conclusion or a kind of supplementary point uh, at the end of this chapter, in my edition is volume 7, page 150 <coughs> and 151 of Al-Mahajjatul Bayba. Qala Abu Hamid, Abu Hamid al-Ghazali mentions, he says, Hadhi hiya usulu ma'an al-shukr. These three are the principles of the concept of shuk. al which embrace the reality of shuk. So from every aspect, you can make sure that you have embraced shuk. So it's a good definition or understanding of shuk. Then he refers to some alternative definitions of shukr given by other scholars or Sufis, masters, and so on and so forth. And he says these definitions are also good, but sometimes they focus on something and maybe overlook other aspects of the definition of shukr. And he says perhaps it's dependent on their own condition. How they were 
understanding and implementing shokr. What shokr meant to them, they tried to put it into definition. Or perhaps when they were talking to someone, they thought this is what that person needs to know about shokr. So these are not bad or, you know, you could say, uh, faulty definitions, but they are not just complete and perfect. So, for example, some people have said, in shuk huwa al-i'tiraf bi al-mun'im ala wajh al Shok, gratitude, is to admit, to acknowledge the blessing from the one who has bestowed this blessing upon us with humility. So there is acknowledgement, that issue of ma'rifa is there. There is khudu, humility, so that condition, a hal, is there. But there is nothing about expressing this with your you know tongue for example fahuwa nawara ila fi'l al-lisan if we say i'tiraf is with tongue but actually i think i'tiraf can be just by heart and he has mentioned hard some of the Conditions of the heart, humility, he has not mentioned happiness, but humility, but that's it. Nothing about what you have to do with that ni'mah. So there is something positive, there are few positive things here, but not complete. Some people have said, Inna shukr huwa thana'u ala al-muhsin bi-dhikr ihsani. Shukr is to praise the benefactor, the one who has given good things to us, has been kind to us, who has done ihsan to us, bidhikr ihsani, to praise him by mentioning his acts of kindness. So, very much focus on verbal and, you know, linguistic expression, but it doesn't go that much beyond. Nadar ila mujarrad amal al This person has only looked at the action of the tongue. Some people have maybe more uh, kind of polite and uh, mystical approach. They have said, Inna shukr huwa al-i'tikaf ala basat al-shuhud bi-idamat hifz al-hurma. Shukr is to do i'tikaf, means to be a staying in a condition, a kind of a permanent stay in the condition of witnessing the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and witnessing his presence with continuing respect for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hafz al-Hurma, you should safeguard the respect and honor for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here there is no mention of tongue. Junaid al you know, Junaid Baghdadi, he has said, Ashukro and La Tara Nafsaka Ahlan the Naman. This is also interesting, but mentions one point. He says, if you want to be grateful, it means that you should say, I don't deserve this blessing. Because if you say I deserve then you think, okay, you, it was your right, and he has just observed justice. 
and la tara nafsaka ahlan lil ni'ma you say i don't deserve i'm not entitled to this blessing so he says this refers to condition of the heart that you are very humble and you don't feel you deserve anything haula aqwaluhum tu'rabu an ahwalihim these people their words their sayings show their own conditions so someone was very much for example concerned about being humble or about being polite or about being respectful about being acknowledging blessings of allah so depending on that they have defined shuk because their conditions are not the same their answers are different their ajwubah, their answers are not the same. ثُمَّ قَدْ يَخْتَلِفُ جَوَابُ كُلِّ وَاحِدٍ فِي حَالَتَيْنِ Even maybe each of them in different conditions, they may give different definition. So not only each of them has defined differently depending on his own condition, even one of them, if he had experienced two conditions, can have different definitions. Or another possibility. يَتَكَلَّمُونَ بِمَا يَرَوْنَهُ لَائِقًا بِحَالِ السَّائِلِ Or sometimes it is not their own condition that they observe. They looked at the person who asked question someone asked them what's the definition of shock so they thought this person needs this type of definition it suits his level okay what is important he says la yanbaghi an tadhun anna ma dhakarnahu ta'nun alayhim don't think that we were somehow blaming them or condemning them with what we have said. We just wanted to say why there are differences in defining gratitude. And here we are not interested in linguistic discussion. Alamul Akhlaq is like Alamul Mantiq. You remember in Mantiq, we say very often that the logician is not concerned about language primarily. If a logician talks about language, for example, Arabic or Farsi or English, this is a secondary issue because logic as such is universal. Yeah? So, a logician does not primarily focus on any language or any linguistic point or grammar. The same is with the Alamul Akhlaq. Alamul Akhlaq is not saying, okay, let's look at the dictionary and find what is the meaning of shukr or gratitude. Dictionary is not solving problem for us and we are not disagreeing about this type of issue. What is important is the concept what do you need to do when you are blessed by someone has given you ni'mah? This is not a matter of language. So you cannot solve this problem of definition by referring to dictionaries. Okay. Now we move on to the next chapter. There is a beautiful discussion here about what does it mean to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we know that we can never be grateful. Bayanu kashvil ghita'a anish shukr 
fi haqqillah subhana this is an account bayan means an account of kashful ghita to unveil ghita means way kashful ghita means to unveil unveil shukr means we want to expose the reality of shukr with respect to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the summary of this discussion before i go to the text the summary is this when we are grateful to people what do we do and then we will see whether this can be applied to allah or not if someone has been very kind to us what we do we praise him so that people know about his favor people appreciate people respect people praise him his rank goes higher in the society for example if he is a shopkeeper we praise him so that more customers go to his shop for example or we try to serve him be at his service for example there is a king we try to serve the king we try to be among the people who serve so that he has more manpower more helpers but what about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what can we do for him how can our praise and gratitude benefit him when he is free from need if all people of the world praise him and thank him or don't praise him and thank him wouldn't make any difference for him plus there is another important point when we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this by itself is a blessing so you are using a blessing to thank for a previous blessing but now you have to thank for this second and then you have to thank for the third every blessing leads to another need for gratitude so you can never thank him so what is the meaning of thanking him when we cannot do anything for him and even thanking him puts us in a uh, situation that we have to be more grateful those who are grateful have to be more grateful because they have the blessings and they have extra and that is they are grateful yeah who has been blessed more the one who has health only or the one who has health and has been grateful he has been doubly blessed so this is the issue here he says maybe this comes to your mind because you are a student you are studying carefully you do mubasa a question may come to your mind you are not people who just listen and disappear so it says maybe this question comes to you as good as good students page 151 maybe it comes to your mind that shock can only be understood with respect to a giver of blessings who can benefit from shock sahibu hazan for shock means he can benefit from shock at least he becomes happy yeah even if i cannot do anything at least he would become happy that i am grateful fa inna nashkurul muluk for example we thank the kings emma bisana either by praising them liyazida mahalluhum fil qulub 
so that their position in the hearts of people can be improved, can become better, they would have higher position in the heart of people. وَيَظْهَرَ كَرَمُهُمْ عِنْدَ النَّاسِ and their karam, their generosity becomes more known and more obvious for people. Like for example, any politician, when we praise him and he becomes more popular, he benefits from this praise because it adds to his fame and respect and popularity. With this praise, their fame and position would become better. Seat means fame, jah means position. Aw bil khidma. So either it is bethana, we praise them, or bil khidma by serving them. By helping them. So what does it mean to serve the king? To help them with respect to some of their needs. They have a purpose. We help them. For example, the king wants to travel. I give him lift or I give him some company, you know, to buy for him things, you know, I keep his dress, you know, I don't know, I do something for them. I prepare report for him, prepare speech for him, I do something. Or we we try to be present before them in the shape of servants and increase their sawat. Sawat means black. Sawat for muluk, for kings, means people who are with them and around them. You know, for a king, it's not good to travel alone. A king, when travels, should be with tens and hundreds of people. You know, so it's good to have more people. We, we call also this, uh, in Farsi, siyahi lashka. Sometimes you have no role, but just to add to the black means in the sense that you add to the population. Siyahi lashka, you know, because king should not be left alone or only the few people. You know, one of the advantages of going to masjid for salat or jama'ah for du'ai kumil is at least we can be siyahi lashkar. At least we can see in this place, in, in this town, alhamdulillah, there are more people who go to masjid. At least your body can serve. It's the minimum. So sometimes maybe you go to a program that you don't understand. You speak English, they speak Urdu or Farsi, you know. But at least you add to the CIA Lashka, you add to the people who are present. It's very important. People should not find mosques empty or less crowded. Entrance. Uh -huh. Entrance. And Jose also, <laughs> at least you come, but this is for beginning. If you just come and you don't study, then you give bad energy, negative energy to others. But to begin with, it's good. We need... Okay. Okay. Sirun le sawad. Sawad in Farsi is used also for literacy. You say bi sawad, ba sawad. Uh, but that is different from Arabic. Arabic sawad means. Vasababun le ziyadat jahihim. 
when you are present and the number of people around the king is more, their position would go higher. فَلَا يَكُونُونَ شَاكِرِينَ لَهُمْ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ ذَلِكِ So no one would be considered as shakir for king, grateful for king, unless he does one of these things, praising them, serving them, helping them, or at least being there as uh, supporters. But but this is impossible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of two reasons. One reason is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not benefit by anything we do and he has no need that we can serve him by meeting his needs. Okay? Muqaddasun an al-hajat ila al-khidmat wal-i'anah wa an nashr al-jahi wal-hishmat bil-thana'i wal-itra. He is to be glorified with respect to having need for service or help or need for we spread his name by praising him and you know mentioning good things about him also he doesn't need us to increase the number of people who are around him like saying that there are so many people who are doing ruku and sujud there are so many angels that do this for him. Of course, even he doesn't need the angels, but we are not adding anything to him. So he says, Fashukurona iya bima la hadha lahu fi. So our gratitude, our thankfulness. For God, by doing things that would not benefit him, okay, is like what? Yudahi shukrana al malik al mun'ima alayna. It's like our gratitude to the king who has been very great, very, very generous with us. By what? To sleep in our own home. If you sleep in your home, you have not done anything for the king. Or if you do prayer and sajda and ruku, you have not done anything for the king. Similarly, whatever we do, we are not doing anything for God. There is a king who has been very generous, but I sleep at home or I do something at home and he is not there, he's absent, he doesn't know, he's not benefiting from this. Allah does not get anything from our actions. So this was one problem. The second problem was what? Uh -huh. Whenever we are going to be grateful, this by itself needs to be grateful. Al-wajhu thani anna jami'a ma nata'atahu bi ikhtiyar nafahu wa ni'matun ukhra alayna. Whatever we do, voluntarily, freely, like being grateful, this by itself is another blessing. Ni'matun ukhra alayna min ni'amillah. is another blessing of God. Is jawarihuna wa qudratuna wa iradatuna wa da'iyatuna wa sa'iru al-umur allati hiya asbabu harakatina wa nafsu harakatina min khalqillah wa ni'matih. 
your will, your power, your decision, your motivations, your movement, whatever you do is a creation of God and it's a blessing from God. How can we thank him for his blessings by using his blessings? It's like, for example, the king has given you his daughter to marry, and then you say to the son of the king, please thank your father. <laughs> you have received the blessing and How can we thank for his blessings with his own blessing? أو أعطانا مركوبا آخر لم يكن الثاني شكرا. If he gives us a horse, for example, and then we take another horse and give him a ride, so we are not doing anything. Again, we are using his own horse to give him a ride. So لم يكن الثاني شكرا للأول منا. The second cannot be counted as شكر. For the first, Balkan Athani Yahtaju ila Shukr. The second also needs Shukr. And he says this makes Shukr for Allah impossible. But on the other hand, we need to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what should we do? Ghazali says, 
the same question occurred to Dawood ala nabiyyina wa alihi wa alihi salam and to Musa ala nabiyyina wa alihi wa alihi salam anna hadha al khatir qad khatara li Dawood alihi salam wa kadhalika li Musa alihi salam you know these were prophets of God they had conversations sometimes with God you know there was Hadith could see, you know, God was speaking to them other than prophetic revelation. For example, they said to God, Ya Rabbi, Kaifa Ashkuruka wa ana la astati o an ashkuraka illa bin ni'matin thaniyatin min ni'amik. Dawood alayhi salam said, Musa alayhi salam said, My Lord, how can I thank you? While I am not able to thank you except with a second blessing, or there is another narration Shukri Laka Ni'matun Ukhra Mink. The fact that I am grateful for you is a second blessing. Tujabu Alayya Shukra Lak. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied, Awhallahu ta'ala ilayhi. This is very beautiful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, according to this narration, if you come to this recognition, that's shukr. If you come to this point that you cannot thank me, And even if you thank me, this is a blessing that is accepted. I don't expect anything more because you are not able to do anything more. This is the maximum you can do to show your understanding and appreciation. So this shows how much ma'rafa is important. It's not just doing actions. This ma'rafa is very important. There is another hadith which says, إِذَا عَرَفْتَ أَنَّ النِّعَمَ مِنِّي رَضِيتُ مِنْكَ بِذَلِكَ الشُّكْرَ When you know that all the blessings are from me, I am pleased with this as shukr. So to acknowledge that all the blessings are from me. So this is what Ghazali has said. And it's very nice and to the point. Mullah Muhsin al-Fayzil Kashani rahmatullah alayhi says, Aghulu. So qala Abu Hamid, but now Aghulu. هذا مروي في الكافي عن الصادق عليه السلام أيضا. So from Shia sources also we have similar hadith from Imam Sadiq عليه السلام. Also we have in Kafi from Imam Sadiq عليه السلام this hadith. من أن عم الله عليه بنعمة فعرفها بقلبه. فَقَدْ أَدَّى شُكْرَهَا Whoever, whomsoever is blessed by God with a blessing. And then he knows that and acknowledges that by his or her heart has delivered شُكْرَ أَدَّى شُكْرَهَا So acknowledgement by heart. Also Imam Kazim alayhi salam said again in Kafi, Man hamid Allah ala ni'mah faqad shakara. Whoever praises God for the blessing that he has received, he has been thankful. Walhamdu afdhalu min tilka ni'mah. 
And the fact that you can do hamd is better than that ni'ma. It's a second and greater ni'ma that you are able to praise. Many people have health, which is great ni'ma. But those who are able to praise God for health, they have more ni'ma. Many people have money, have children. Have memory, have ability to study, have ability to do charity, have parents, this is all blessings. But those who acknowledge that with their heart and praise God for that, this is greater than all those blessings. Because to have those blessings is not what you have done, it's not your achievement. What makes a person better is what that person has done. I have good parents. Okay, what, what I have done. I have health. I have memory. I have, you know, good teachers. What I have done is more important than what I have been given. So, alhamdu afwalu min tilka al-ni'ma. The fact that you are Acknowledging the blessing and praise God for that blessing is better than that ni'mah. Yeah? That ni'mah is a gift of God, but this hand, although it's a gift of God, but it's a gift for which you have worked. Okay. Even that work is in entertainment. Even that work and energy is in entertainment. Even the work. The, the work. work doing yes. Doing yes. 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 But here the comparison is between hamd and na'mah. If you can, of course, use it in a good way also, that's a sign of shuk. That also needs to be thanked for. Then Ghazali mentions another point. This is again for scholars, for serious students. He makes a very good, delicate question. He says, if you ask me, in قُلْتْ فَقَدْ فَهِمْتُ السُّؤَالِ He said, if you say, I understood the question the question was how can we ever be grateful to god with those two problems but i cannot understand what god communicated to dawood and musa السلام, and like that what does it mean that if i know that i cannot thank that is shuk وَفَهْمِي قَاصِرٌ عَنْ إِدْرَاكِ مَعْنَى مَا أَوْحَى إِلَيْهِمْ وَإِنِّي أَعْلَمُ إِسْتِحَالَةَ الشُّكْرِ لِلَّهِ I know shukr is impossible. We cannot do shukr for that. But what does it mean that if I know I cannot do shukr, this is shukr. Of course, I already explained that, but uh, that was extra to the book. So if someone says how to understand that shukr is impossible is accepted as shukr. If you say this, that I understood the question but I don't know why it is shukr, فَلَا أَفْحَمُهُ فَإِنَّ هَذَا الْعِلْمْ أَيْزًا نِعْمَةٌ مِنْ فَكَيْفَ صَارَ شُكْرًا this recognition that this is a blessing from God, again, this is ni'mah. So how it became shukr? Why Allah is accepting this as shukr? And then he says, the conclusion is, You say God told Musa and Dawood, if you know that you cannot thank me, this is shukr. 
It means that if you know that shock is impossible, this is shock. So did they do tank and shock? No. So how this can be then shock? إن قبول الخلعة الثانية من الملك شكر للخلعة الأولى. How can we say by taking a second dress of honor from the king we are thanking the first for the first dress. والفهم قاصر عن درك السر في our understanding. is not sufficient to know the secret here. What's the secret here? Why the people who know that they cannot thank and this thanking needs another thanking, why they are considered as grateful? So, he says, Fa'la. Now, he says, okay, it's a good question. Now listen to the answer. He said, this is indeed knocking one of the doors of knowledge to open for you. Because every question, if, it, if there's a good question, it opens a door of understanding for you. A bad question is waste of time and may lead to confusion. <laughs> But a good question, you know, like for example, <clears throat> if you are hungry, you should know which door to knock. If you do the knock of a generous person who has always good food, and is kind to give, this knocking the door would help you to have food. But if you try to knock every door, many of these doors never open. And even the energy that you had, now you wasted to go and knock every door in the house, in the city. Plus, some people, maybe their food is not good for you. Plus, they may be miserly. They open the door, you smell the fragrance, but they don't give you the food. <laughs> so you should knock the door of generous people who have food which is useful for them. This is the example of people who ask questions. You should know whom to ask. Not that you ask everyone which book to read, which alim to ask, which speaker to listen. The one who has something good for you to offer and he is generous. Otherwise you will be wasting your time and energy and maybe even you will be poisoned. So, هذا غرع باب من أبواب المعارف. This is to knock one of the gates of معارف, great teachings, which he says أعلى من علوم المعاملة, which is more important than the knowledge which is about transactions between people and how to deal with people. And he says we just make some. indication because if you want to answer this properly you need to understand truly Tawheed this is Bab Mumin Abwab Tawheed but we make just some reference Hahuna Nadaran Nadaran Be'ayn Tawheed Al Mahm There are two ways to look at this issue. I mentioned the first one, we have two minutes, but inshallah we will complete the discussion next week. One is to look at this from the perspective or from the eye of Tawheed. If you believe in Tawheed, a full-fledged Tawheed, 
you know that everything is an act of God. And everything that you do is done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا مؤثر في الوجود إلا There is no one who can influence anything in this world except God. Of course, we believe that under God there is a hierarchy and there are other agents at work. So with Afali does not contradict that we are also involved. But we are not involved independent from God. So all actions finally go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Allah is the one who receives the soul when someone is dying. Allah yatawaffal anfusahina mawtaha. But also malakul mawt. Wal yatawaffakum malakul mawt alladhi wukkila bikum. And under malakul mawt, angels. Tawaffathu rusuluma. So Allah, Malakul Mut, and the angels of death. But finally, everything goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, if you look at pure Tawheedi perspective, monotheistic perspective, you would realize how the nazar yu'arrifuka أنه الشاكر وأنه المشكور. When you thank him, it is indeed him who is grateful and him who is thanked. You are just fortunate to put yourself as an agent as an instrument for him thanking himself. The lover and the beloved are him. There is nothing in the realm of existence, except him. Of course, it means independently. Not that we don't exist. We exist, but we don't exist independently. You know, there's a famous saying, we say, It was only God and nothing else. Then philosophers say, Still, it's the same situation. And now even still, it is only Allah and there is nothing with Him. Because there is nothing at His level. There is nothing next to Him. Whether we are created or not created, we cannot give company to God. It's not that without us, God is alone. And with us, God is not alone. We cannot add to him. This ayah in the Quran is very deep. Law aradna an nattakhidha lahwan lattakhadnaahu min ladunna in kunna fa'adeen. If we were looking for some entertainment and amusement, we would have taken it from ourselves. Allah didn't need toys to entertain himself. Had he wanted to entertain himself, the best way was to entertain himself with himself. Okay? A great philosopher who enjoys thinking and reflecting and contemplating doesn't need a comedian to come and entertain him. If comedian comes and says, don't distract me. Thank you very much, but please leave me alone. I don't need comedian, I don't need you know movie. I just I want to be able to continue my contemplation. So we are not 
giving company to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-an kama kan. Still it's the same situation. Hadha nadharu man ad arafa annahu laysa fil wujud ghayru. This is the view of the one who knows there is nothing in the realm of existence other than him who is independently there. Anna kulla shay'in halikun illa wajhahu. Everything perishes except his face. Wa anna dhalika sid'un fi kulla halin azalan wa abadan. And this is the case in the beginning and in the end. Eternally, this is the case. لَأَنَّ الْغَيْرُ هُوَ الَّذِي يُتَصَبَّرْ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ بِنَفْسِهِ قِوَامٌ Because someone other than God, someone that can be second to God, must be someone who is self-sufficient, someone who is independent. There is no such a thing. So, he says, from a purely monotheistic view, what is important is we know our poverty, our reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you come to this recognition, this is the maximum you can achieve. Allah doesn't want you anything more. Because you cannot do anything more. This is, the, this is great if you can achieve this. We, inshallah, continue this discussion next week. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to include us among the people who, with maximum understanding, acknowledge the blessings that he has bestowed upon them and acknowledge their poverty and their need for him and who do their best to use every blessing that he has given them in the way that he has prescribed.